Maybe you've heard about this green comet that's in the news. Well, I'm going to show you how you can observe it and maybe even take a picture of it over the next couple of weeks. So uh, one of the things that's so cool about this comet, like many comets, is that we pretty much are only going to see them once, right? Comets have such long orbital periods that, that uh, they come by the Earth and the Sun, and then it's going to be tens of thousands of years until it comes by again, which makes every comet kind of a rare appearance. Now, I've had the good fortune of seeing a few comets over the past few years. You know, they're discovered all the time, and some of them are bright enough that we can observe them with our eyes. This was the Christmas comet, the Christmas comet back in 2018. And I just, I showed you this picture. It's a terrible picture, obviously, but it's right there in the red circle. And I, I want to show this to you because I took this picture with my cell phone camera on a night when the moon was pretty bright. I could barely see this thing with my eyes, but I knew it was next to the Pleiades, which is this open cluster here. And so I took a eight second long exposure. Maybe you know how to adjust the manual settings on your cell phone camera or you can take a longer exposure. So as long as you can hold your camera steady, maybe like prop it up on something or, or set it on a tripod, use like a selfie stick or something like that, um, then you can take an exposure that's, that's a little longer than normal. You know, maybe eight, 10, maybe 30 seconds long, and you can get a ca uh, capture a picture of a, of a comet. Here's another comet that was uh, 2020, 2020. So, you know, these things are rare that they're bright enough for us to see with our eyes, but new ones are discovered, and, and so every couple of years, there's one that you can, you can observe. This was a, probably a 15 to 30 second exposure. The comet, of course, is down here. This line across the sky was a bright satellite. It was actually the International Space Station moving across the sky while I took this picture. Here's a more zoomed in picture. It's a little out of focus, but you can see how it had this really long tail. Um, and the beauty of taking a picture with your cell phone is that you can probably see even more detail than what you can see with just your eyes. So where can we see this particular comet? Uh, I'd encourage you to go check out Stellarium Web. So this is stellarium-web.org. And when you open it up, it's going to start you looking to the north and you'll probably see the comet right there. It's the C slash 2022E3. And its position is given right here in, in the program, which is super cool. It's due north, and it, right now, on uh, January 30, it's really close to Polaris, which is great, because that means it's circumpolar. It's up all night long, which is great. And it's next to a bright star, the North Star, which never moves. It's right there. So, so uh, if you can find the North Star, you should be able to uh, see the comet nearby. The challenge that we're going to face over the next week is that the moon is also up. And uh, where is it? There it is. It's up high right there. Looks like it's like first quarter moon or something like that. And so from uh, an observing standpoint, the moon is going to make it hard to see that faint, diffuse comet. So one of the things we can do is uh, we can just try to see it anyways. I mean, I have a picture of a comet, even though the moon was up, it just doesn't look as good. You can't really see the tail. The other option is that the moon right now tonight is going to set early in the morning, you know, and but obviously it'll still be dark out and the comet will still be up. So if you get up early, which here in the winter time, it's still dark when most people are getting up, um, then you can go out and try to see the comet early in the morning without the moon, which is where you have the best likelihood of seeing this tail. Uh, it'll still be next to Polaris for the next day or two, but as time goes on, a few different things are gonna happen. So if we go forward in time here a couple days, one of the things that's gonna happen is the comet's going to move further and further away from Polaris. Now, right after sunset, that means the comet's going to be moving higher and the higher in the sky. That's good. The higher it is in the sky, the better observing we're going to get. When it's near the horizon, it makes it hard to see. But as time goes forward, we're also getting more and more of a full moon, which is bad. Because full moon means brighter light pollution on the night sky. It's going to make it harder to see this comet. So an alternative, if you don't want to wake up early in the next day or two, um, early in the morning, another option is you wait maybe a week or so, and by February 7 or 8, the moon is going to be past full, and it won't be rising until a couple hours after sunset. And what that means, by that point, um, the moon is out of the picture for at least an hour or two, and the comet is really high in the sky. Comet will be really high in the sky, and that's that's good. And it'll also be near um, 
a couple of other bright stars. It'll be near Capella and it will be near Mars, which will look like a really bright star. And it'll be by the Pleiades. Uh, Pleiades, that same open star cluster. So that means it's going to be easy to locate in the sky in terms of where to look, more or less straight overhead shortly after sunset. So a few options for observing this comet, you know, get out your cell phone camera, go to those manual options, turn the, the exposure length to like 10 or 20 seconds. See if you can get a picture of this thing. And if you do, definitely send it to me because I'd love to see what you're able to come up with. All right. I wish you the best. Clear skies. Keep looking up and uh, go get that comment.